There we go. Hello, and welcome back to the hobo and his girlf- Make sure I don't run my cat over. Girlfriend, uh, something, uh, Wrestling show. My name is the one and only hobo Tom. I just did my laundry, so I'm wearing my nice clothesline wrestling shirt here. Always wear your wrestling shirt, folks. I'm here to talk a little bit about Monday Night Raw. Yes, it's that time of the week again where I do my weekly wrestling review. A little bit recap, and I give it a rating as well. And I recently put up two videos. I did a R R and R on the NXT Halftime Heat Show, which was really fun. And MRH 20S70. This video, just like you saw previously, goes out to you. Be my tag team partner. Maybe. So with that said and done, again, the one person leaves a comment. Again, if you too leave a comment or even subscribe, and I can see who you are if you subscribe, if you too get a shout-out on a special video on your dedication. Um, the second show I did, I introduced the Daytona Beach Bump Fight League Wrestling and its newest participant and stadium, that, or at least set up, by the way, how hobo it looks. I mean, who uses soccer balls as... Turnbuckle pads. I guess I would. Or hobo, yes. And we saw Twisted Pixie make her debut match against Carmella. Remember the one advantage WWE wrestlers have when they come to the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League. They get paid in cash and or aluminum. And there are no state taxes. Hooray, Florida. But let's talk about some Monday Night Raw. So it starts off with Stephanie McMahon comes out. She gets interrupted by Becky. And Becky kind of interrupts her own musical entrance. Um, just kind of a recap of what happened between Becca and Ronda Rousey. <laughs> Becky must fight. If Becky doesn't go against Ronda Rousey at WrestleMania, ooh, do not want to be WWE. Especially with the rumor mills going around that AEW's landed, I think, a fairly decent TV deal with TNT, I think. So that should be interesting. And then, of course, Steph gave her the ultimatum of if you do not get medically cleared, she's like, Becky's like, heck no. And she's like, okay, you're suspended. And Becky then proceeds to slap Steph, put in the disarmor, and slap a whole bunch of other men, grown men around. Good stuff to open the show. Although very reminiscent of the authority angle that they've done in the past. Maybe not as good as I thought. But it was Becky Lynch. Then the first match of the night, we have Ronda Rousey versus Liv Morgan. Liv Morgan is definitely the cowardly heel. This was, I think at most, a three-minute squash match. And this match in itself, and I haven't done this in a long time, and it's very rare that I actually do do this. This is a piece of toast. And then Ronda Rousey, oh, again, she just. Just fall off. Again, I just have to find a nice little helmet. I don't really want to spend the money yet for a snowball, because that's a darn good looking mic. But Ronda Rousey goes for a little stretch. Mm. Mm. 
Ah, okay, who's next? And then Sarah Logan. The ring fares a little bit better. A little offense in there. But not that much. This match probably went five minutes. Let's only go Logan again. Rather than Drazi was still probably stretching, just getting warmed up. Sir Logan came in, came in. Really hard stop. Hot, uh, hot start for a minute. Semi squash match. Again. A squash match, but at least a furthered storyline, I, I guess. And I guess eventually Ruby Riot might face Ronda Rousey at the Elimination Chamber pay per view. Coming up, I, I guess, in like two or three weeks. It has to be two weeks. Is that going to be Daytona Race Week? Oh, please, God. Please. Hit Race Week. God, those idiot nests. The hills here, I don't want to watch her throwing a circle in my gray bib and throw a hat, chewing a piece of grass and flip my peach moonshine. The hills here. But this was a can of soup, man. Yeah, and so it was a little bit better. Again, I don't like giving out toast, but that match definitely deserved toast. Then what I thought was the most fun part of the entire show, really, was the Four Corners Tag Team Match. I think that's just a simple way. It's just a four-way tag team match. Between, of course, one of my favorite tag teams that always puts a smile on my face, and that is Heavy Machinery. And they were facing Lucha House Party. Again. Puts a smile on my face again. And then they faced the Revival. Wow. The Revival's getting what they wanted for. They wanted the tag team to be prominently shown. Might not be them, but they're doing good. And then there was the beat. Can't have superstars all over the place. Unless Saturday showed up on Raw. Who else? Who else is a tag team on Raw? Hmm. That Raw tag team division really stinks. But enough of that. This was an amazing match, and if it wasn't for wasn't for the fact that it was a four way, just fun match, it would get a little bit higher rating. I almost wanted to give it my higher rating, but said nah. Kind of knew what was going to happen once the B team got in the ring. You know, we all knew what was happening, folks. But it was really fun, though. I mean, heavy machinery, they're awesome. They can double team, they can do their goofy double team moves forever. Tucker Knight knows how to collegiately wrestle. I saw, again, a very basic German soup, very basic German soup. Uh, Probably belly to back. Flex. He was he used a power half Nelson to get a pin. When was the last time you saw that? So that was really good. That I was geeking out. I loved it. Being a former high school and I wrestled collegiately for one year. So I was I I loved that part. I was geeking out for it. Lucha House Party, they do flippy stuff like it's no flippy stuff's business. Revival is a very classic mat tag team. They don't do rest holds. They do a lot of, uh, for lack of a better term, just grounding an opponent. Technical mat wrestling and suplexes. They put in a headlock when it's necessary and when they do it with purpose. Well, then either they're going bring the opponent back into their corner or they're going to, of course, go off the ropes, but it's not prolonged them. So it doesn't feel like a wrestle. And again, when, when he delivers punches, hey, if you're going to just hold someone and punch him in the head, I mean, that's a pretty good pretty good thing to do, is to headlock and punch him in the head. 
it makes sense and it works. Then the B team, the B team can sell. And again, they do have that good Matt wrestling sense. Um, very much more so of the WWE style of in sports entertainment. But again, their wrestling is really good. And this was fun. I mean, there were so many spots. Um, heavy machinery, again. A duel throwing out of the ring, the revival. Dual body slams on the B team. And then, of course, picking up the Lucha House Party. Or no, did they? I think they threw both the revival and the B team outside the ring. They tried to throw the uh, Lucha House Party out. Lucha House Party kind of landed on their feet on the outside, jumped back onto the ropes. Heavy Machinery was like ready to, to, to punch them, and did a backflip onto everyone else. Again, fun stuff. Revival, again, just smart. They know how to tag team. They know how to double team. They understand the concepts of tag team wrestling and what, what they can do as a tag team. Um, they hit the Shatter Machine onto Bo Dallas. And it was just fun because they started off, again, they're a smart tag team. They hit the blind tag. Uh, Heavy Machinery was going to go for the compactor. They low bridged Tucker Knight, took out Otis Dozovich, hit the Shattering Machine on Bo Dallas, and they picked up the victory. This is a fun, good match. This is a surf and turf quality match. But it was really good. Mm -hmm. And they have a Kurt Angle promo. Oh, the only thing I didn't like about this match is that they had um, right after the introductions because the Revival and the B team got jobber introductions. I don't know why. Uh, Bailey and Sasha Bank were there talking. And, of course, Nikki Cross just goes Nikki Cross in her talk. Nikki Cross also then you have a Kurt Angle interview, kind of. Oh, no, it was a. Not yet. That's next. Um, Kurt Hawkins and Zack Ryder promo. We'll get our first. Don't worry about your 250 losses. They spelled my name wrong. I've been here for 13 years. That's pretty embarrassing. Kevin Dunn, you need to do a better job. Then Kurt Angle comes out. Again, talks about three eyes, and it sounds almost like a retirement speech. Kurt Angle's probably going to hang up the boots. Probably after WrestleMania, he's done everything. Power to Kurt Angle. Uh, Corbin, of course, runs runs him down, as Corbin obviously does. Uh, Drew McIntyre came out. And once Drew McIntyre came out, you knew it wasn't going to be long before Braun Strowman came out. So he's going to team with Kurt Angle in a match. He cleans house. It was a fun, fuzzy, feel-good moment. Uh, they talk a little bit about Black History Month. And then they talk about Finn Balor, how he had his match. With Brock Lesnar. So it's just kind of a little bit of recap there. Then we had Nikki Cross versus Alicia Fox. Versus Sasha Banks and Bailey. And as and as Bailey's coming out, she gets introduced first. <laughs> Nikki Cross gets Nikki Cross and jumps her. And then in the back, you see Alicia Fox dragging Sasha Bailey up by her boot. Obviously, they got jumped backstage because Nikki Cross is not quite all there, folks. You know what I mean? She's a serial killer. The Fruit Loop sign. I mean, Nikki Cross just goes Nikki. Bailey just starts to get beat up. I almost thought for a second it's like, they're not going to have Sasha Banks and Bailey lose, are they? That would be a real shocker. It's late. I've been up since 10 in the morning, too. So I think I need to get some sleep soon. Um, Sasha. I'm um, sorry, Bailey gets beat up. Sasha Banks looks half dead in the corner. Um, eventually, the, the, those two, Banks and Bailey, do mount a little bit. 
of some offense. They cut Nikki Cross just like runs into the ring post though. I mean, not really that provoked. It was weird. And when Alicia Fox got rolled up, I'm like, I knew this was going to happen last week. Even though it features Nikki Cross, this is a ham sandwich match. The next, you have the Road Dog, R O A W E D O W G, the Road Dog, Jesse James comes out. Because, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, D Generation X proudly brings to you the most electrifying roadie in all of WWE history. He's the Road Dog, Jesse James. Now, I forget how the rest of the promo goes. I know that's how it starts. And of course, you just go suck it. And then, of course, you hear the country music playing. So, you know, that means. J E double F J A double R E double T Jeff Jarrett comes up. He's actually in his ring gear, um, his kind of TNA ring gear because he's just wearing the trunks and a t shirt. I don't think he said slap nuts though. That makes the crowd go crazy. And of course, they, the two of them start to sing. Elias comes out, interrupts that. Uh, Jeff Jarrett again. This is this is going to be a match with between Jeff Jarrett and Elias, and I wonder if this is going to be the the celebrity match for WrestleMania. Oh, wait, it actually could be WWE. Give me one shiny nickel for that thought, because I'm doing your booking for you right now. I mean, it was a fun match, uh, Jeff Jarrett. Jumps Elias at the start, beats him up a lot. Elias does make his comeback. Kind of knew that was going to happen. Elias does hit the drift away on Double J. After a fairly entertaining match. Gets the pin. Starts to, starts to beat up Double J. Of course, the Road Dog gets involved. Protects his buddy. Road Dog gets starts to get beat up. Says, I got two words for you. And then Double J, he got a good guitar because he, he smacked Elias in the back with it. That guitar did not shatter. They're using a lot less props when they do this because generally the guitar would shatter and it's filled with baby powder. So it kind of like explodes. But that didn't happen this time. Either that or he really pulled back. Of course, Road Dog says, suck, suck it. Although half the crowd, I think, wanted to say slap nuts. And for a while, they were chanting, walk with Elias. Oh, walk with Elias. Oh, walk with Elias. Um, then there was a backstage thing between Dana Brooke and Natalia. I don't know what's those two are not a tag team. It is nice to see Dana Brooks getting used. I know Natalia, I think, has been kind of hinting that she wants some time off. Power to Natalia, she deserves it. Um, she is getting kind of old. I want to say she's in her mid 30s. One thing I've learned about women in their mid 30s they hear a baby clock every so often. I dealt with that actually twice. And I said, eh -eh. I'm not getting rushed because that's when bad things happen. Mainly to me. And the fact that I never have a boat. <laughs> then we have a Finn Balor versus not Bobby Lashley, but Leo Rush. This is good. Leo Rush actually came out of his ringer and he, he looks small. I mean, I know he's billed as like 160. I don't even think he's that. I think he looks like 120. They mean like a flyweight belt just for him. I mean, 
I hate to say it, but I think Natalia's bigger than he is. And Natalia's big, but not the bad big, I guess. I think Dan Brooke might actually be, be bigger than him. So uh, Lashley says, yeah, if, if you can beat this guy, Leo Rush, you, you might get a championship belt. I have no idea what they're saying at the commentary desk. But during this match, Renee made, made some Chris Jericho comment. Where did that come from? And <laughs> Corey Graves said, I'm not paying attention to, to whatever Renee says. And she had like a kind of shocked statement. She's like, what? So those bantering between those two is kind of getting oldish. But then more so the match. Um, Finn just looks bigger. Leo Rush can fly, though. He did a standing frog something. Still a match to land on his feet. Did a flippy thing into the other corner. Of course, once he got into the other corner, Finn gave him the drop kick. Um, Bobby Lashley did get, in, did get involved for a little bit. And then Bobby Lashley got tossed from the ringside area. So again, it was just a true one-on-one -on -one between Finn Balor and Leo Rush. Finn, does, Finn needs to support the full rib tape. The Diamond Dallas Page rib tape job. Just not a little patch of tape. The whole thing. Uh, then he got it was a drop kick in the corner, hit by the coup de gras, hit the coup de gras. It was fun because both of these two were kind of like flying around the ring. It was fun. This was probably the best match of the night. This is a good solid cheeseburger match. Paige come out, promotes her movie. I think The Rock looks like to be the most exciting thing about the whole movie, and it's just one-liners. Then you have a moment with us with Alexa Bliss and E C three. Ethan Carter the third. So she tries like Alexa Bliss is like you're going to join him, all right? Come, you want to definitely join Raw, yeah? Join Raw. Nia Jackson eventually comes out. So yeah, I I actually entered the men's Royal Rumble. No one cares. Dean came out. Said, you know what, Nia Jax, leave me the hell alone. I've had my issues with women. I don't want to have issues. Just leave me alone. And it's like, oh, who are you? Because I think he referred to Ethan Carter the X. And Nia Jax just, um, I'm sorry, Ethan Carter the third just stacked him. And then, of course, that led to the match between E C 3 versus Dean Ambrose. And you really know that Dean Ambrose is. Out of there, or at least mentally checked out, because he started off the match pretty hot. Typical Dean match. You think Carlos III did make did get his comeback? Once he got that comeback, Dean didn't do anything. It was a jackknife. It was a jackknife something. That's what they called it. They just kind of held on, kind of flipped Dean over, held on to his legs. A jackknife thing. Jackknife roll up, I think. And Ethan Carter III got his Raw debut win against Dean Ambrose. It was fairly quick. It's a ham sandwich match. It wasn't terribly interesting. It didn't show Ethan Carter the third to be as strong as he could have been. It definitely wasn't a squash match. 
but Dean's just saying, they're just saying, Dean, out, Dean, if you're leaving, you're going to put over all this new talent. Dean's a friend. He's probably said, yeah, I'll, oh, oh, I'll, I'll do it. I'll go out there and do the job. Then you have another Mojo Mirror interview. Again, Steven Larson had the good idea of when Mojo rallies in front of the mirror, the reflection in the mirror is actually Zack Ryder. Ooh, it's a, hey, bros! Or what they should do, they should have Mojo rally in one type of ring gear, but the mirror reflects another type of ring gear. That would almost be cool. Again, all I ask for, WWE for that idea, one shiny quarter. And no more copyright violations. And this leads us to the main event of the evening where you have Drew McIntyre and Baron Corbin versus Kurt Angle and Braun Strowman. This was actually fairly fun. Um, Angle, he's, he's having fun. Um, people are interviewing him. He's, he's getting around talking to people. Um, he is, he, he's, of course, one thing that's always undefeated is Father Time. But he is Braun Strowman on his side right now. So Angle, again, he can, he can still German suplex the, the snot out of people. Um, eventually he gets to Baron. Baron eventually does tag Drew. I think he German suplex with Drew McIntyre, but he could not hit the angle slam initially. Of course, he's just getting old, and Drew McIntyre is a manly man. Oh, if I had Drew McIntyre's body, no shirt at work. And I'd be wearing wrestling trunks all day. Or a bathing suit. Jean shorts. Actually, I would just wear dress pants. No shirt, put my name tag on my pants, and things would be good. Well, I am not him. I am a hobo. Hobo Tom, yes. Um, Angle gets beat up for most of the match. Again, Drew cheap, cheap shots Angle. Braun Strowman, when, on the one segment, he threw that chair. He threw that chair with authority. Um, eventually, Braun does get in. He actually gets a blind tag from Kurt Angle. Um, starts cleaning house until he gets double teamed, until he gets sheep shot by Drew from the outside. Then he goes on the outside, runs over Drew once, runs over Baron. The second time he tried to get Drew, Drew threw him against the barricade. And I kind of and and then Angle got back in, just started a German suplex to everyone. I don't know what happened specifically. I guess Drew put his hands on the ref, and the ref said, no, 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 eh-eh, eh-eh, I hear. I am channeling the spirit of Dusty Rose, baby. We're going to have us of the Dusty Finish, baby. Nobody wins. There was a DQ. And of course, that Braun Strowman was upset. Even though I think he won. Him and Angle technically won. But he just started rolling out choke slams onto the steps. One on Drew and one on Baron Corbin. It was fun. Again, this is not a good cheeseburger match. And that was Monday Night Raw. Overall, it wasn't terrible. Oh, that's my cat's brush, my cat's comb. It wasn't terrible. It wasn't anything to really write home about besides really the tag team match. So I guess they're keeping their promise to the revival, but everything else now is going downhill. Again, I would like to thank everyone for watching, and please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Oh, wait, I don't have to say that anymore. Just check out this next graphic. Have a good night, everyone, and I'll see you probably Wednesday. And you'll see why. Bye.